A few weeks ago, I posted this picture on Instagram and Facebook, and I got a lot of messages like, cool, uh, is that a transparent monitor? In this video, I'm gonna take you through a step-by-step -step process on how we can get this transparent screen or monitor effect. Let's get into it. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. And in this channel, I talk about everything tech. I talk about hardware, I do software reviews, I do tutorials on different pieces of software. Anything tech, I'll talk about. Tech, tech, tech. In this video, I'm gonna do something a little bit different, a little bit fun. We're gonna go through a step-by-step -step process on how you can get this transparent screen or transparent monitor effect, photo effect. Now I'm not gonna recreate the Instagram photo here uh, because this monitor is way too huge and I used two monitors in that photo, so it's gonna take way too long. But you are required to have a screen, so I'm gonna use my iPad as the transparent uh, screen that we're gonna do. And then you are gonna need a photo editor, something like Photoshop. In my case, I'm gonna use Photoshop, but you can use something like GIMP or some online editor, but you are gonna need specific tools to get this effect done. And the last requirement I'll say is you need to have a way to stabilize or keep your camera stationary. Now, you don't need a fancy camera to get this done. Actually, in my case, I'm gonna use my iPhone here, but I am gonna put it on a little mount here and put it on a tripod, but you can lean it up against something uh, to keep it stationary and keep it like, you know, just in one place, but you do have to keep it in one place uh, during this whole process. But this will be apparent as we go through step-by-step through this whole process. Okay, so we have our setup here. We have my iPhone here on a gorilla pod here with a tripod mount or a mount for the tripod. I have my iPad Pro here. Then I purposely put some stuff behind it. And so first we're gonna take a picture without the iPad. And then we're gonna take a picture with the iPad on there. Then we're gonna take both pictures into Photoshop here. So let's get that done now. Okay, so now we're gonna take our first photo, first without the iPad screen, but first let's note that we have the cloth here, we have this wireless charger, we have the bar from the mic arm here, we have the mic here. So these are things that are gonna show through the screen eventually, but we will first wanna take a photo without the iPad screen there first. So let's take that photo. Okay, and I'll show you that to you on the screen there. Now we're gonna place our iPad here and we wanna place it in a way where it's kind of showing some things, but hiding some things. So we have the cloth back there that'll partly show. We have the wireless charger that's totally hidden. And then we have the mic arm that's kind of sticking out from the back and coming out from this end. So that should give us a cool effect as far as the transparent screen photo effect is concerned. So let's take this photo. And now let's bring this into Photoshop, but there's two things that I need to note here. You can't move this screen and you can't move this tripod here or this camera here. It's very important that you don't move it or else this effect won't work. Now it's gonna be a little awkward for me because I can't move this tripod, but my computer is there that I'm gonna do the editing. So while I'm doing the editing, I can't move this tripod here or that iPad. So. That's one thing to note, don't move these things or this effect won't work. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and sorry you can't see my mouse, it's just the way I have things set up in my recording software here. But as you can see, I have both photos here in different layers. So if I hide the top layer, you can see the photo without the iPad on the bottom and the photo with the iPad on top. So what we wanna do now is get our lasso tool here. And actually it's the polygonal lasso tool so we can do some straight lines here. And you just wanna kind of estimate, and you don't have to be so exact of this outline here, but you wanna outline the screen itself here. In my case, it's my iPad here. So I'm just gonna kind of give a rough kind of outline of the screen here. And here we go. So that's kind of step one. Now that we have this screen outline, we're gonna hide the top layer here, select the bottom layer, the background layer here, and we're gonna go ahead and copy this. Now on a Mac, it's Command-C. On a Win Windows PC, it's Control-C. Or you can go to the menu, Edit, and then Copy. Now it's not Copy Merged, but just Copy. And you're just gonna copy 
that part of the layer. And then now we're gonna bring this into a new document or a new Photoshop file. Okay, so now that we have our copied image into a new Photoshop file here, now what we wanna do now is make sure that this white part is all covered. Basically, we wanna stretch this image that it's covering the entire canvas and no white is showing. So the way that we're gonna do that is make sure your top layer is selected here and then we're gonna go into edit, transform, and then skew. We're gonna use a skew uh, tool here to get this to work here. Okay, so we have the skew tool selected now. Now we're just gonna stretch this photo to cover the entire canvas here. And as we stretch different sides, we're gonna to have to keep on adjusting more sides here but just trying to cover up that entire canvas here. And there's still a little more white spots here. So, um, yep, and then we should be pretty good there. Bring that up a little bit. So now we gotta bring this down a little bit. So you just gotta keep on playing with it until you cover the entire canvas. So now we have an image that will work for us and now we can export that. Now there's a little bit of white spot there, but that's okay. We don't have to be so exact in this spot here. And then lastly, before we transfer this back to my iPad, so I can set this as the background, we need to make sure that this is in the right aspect ratio or right size for your screen. So if you're doing this on a monitor, most likely you have a 1080p screen. That's a 16 by nine aspect ratio. My iPad here happens to be a four by three aspect ratio. So I'm going to show you how I do that right now. Okay, here we are in the image size or image resize dialog box in Photoshop. And the main thing we wanna do is set this size, the width and height, to the same resolution as our screen. So if you're using a 1080p screen, it's most likely 1920 by 1080, or you wanna set it to the aspect ratio. So in my case, I wanted to set it to a four by three aspect ratio. But the first thing you wanna do is you wanna unlink these two so you can set it to any screen size you want without it trying to keep the aspect ratio. And in my case, I'm gonna four by three, I'm gonna set this to 1600 by 1200. And this will stretch your photo and it will make it a little bit pixelated, but this doesn't affect the overall results that we wanna get here. Okay, so now we have our final image here and now we're gonna export this and send it over to my iPad. Now remember, even when I send it over to my iPad, I can't move the iPad because that'll ruin the effect here. So we're gonna just bring this to the iPad and set it as the background. Okay, so I'm back on our setup here and I haven't moved my phone at all or the iPad at all, but I have transferred the file that we created on our, in Photoshop and put it as the lock screen background there. So what I'm gonna do is hit the space bar on my keyboard here and then take a photo from my iPhone and then you'll see the final results here. Now, I hope that wasn't too complicated. Once you start doing some of them, then it's you really get the hang of it. Now, I've done really complicated ones as far as doing multiple screens. So looking through one screen, through another screen. So I did an iPad, an iPhone. Anyway, you can get really creative with what you wanna do with this. And there are a lot of really creative things that people have done on the web. And so I'll link to some of those in the description below. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Consider subscribing. Until the next one, see ya.